So in today's video, we want to look at inflection points of a function. So an inflection point occurs when the tangent lines switch side of the function. So let's consider uh, this cubic function here. Here, the tangent lines lie above the curve. But if we look over here, the tangent lines to the graph lie below. So what we would expect is that an inflection point occurs somewhere near the origin. Now a common uh, interpretation of the inflection point is that the second derivative of the function vanishes. This actually turns out to be incorrect. What you actually need is that the second derivative uh, changes sign about the inflection point. So let's have a look at what the distinction is between the second derivative changing sign about the point and the second derivative vanishing. Let's say we graphed the second derivative of the function and the second derivative looked like this. So this is a graph of the second derivative. We would say, okay, the second derivative equals zero at x equals zero. And a lot of people interpret this to be the condition for which we'll guarantee an inflection point. But notice that the second derivative here is negative, while the second derivative to the right of the origin is uh, positive. So there is a change of sign here. What we want to uh, avoid is if the second derivative looked like this. So this is the graph of the second derivative. Say it, it vanishes here, so f double prime equals zero. And to the left, the second derivative is positive, and to the right, the second derivative is positive. Now what I claim is that in this case, uh, there is an inflection point. There is an inflection point at x equals zero. But for this one, I claim there is no inflection point. So let's illustrate that with some examples. So let's say we had a look at f of x is equal to x to the 4. Now we can graph this function rather easily. It looks like a wide parabola. Looks something like this. Now if we look at the uh, tangent lines, they all lie below the curve. There's never a point where the tangent lines uh, become above the curve. So we want to look at the second derivative of this function. So we'll calculate the first derivative and we'll get 4x cubed. We'll calculate the second derivative and we'll get 12x squared. Now, if the inflection points occur when the second derivative is equal to zero, then this equation tells us that an inflection point occurs at x equals zero. But that's obviously false because there's no change of side of the tangent line. So this condition is false. Now, if we graph the second derivative, let's see what happens. So we graph 12x squared. Well, that just looks like a very steep parabola. And it does uh, vanish at x equals zero. But here we see the second derivative is positive. Here we also see the second derivative is positive. So there's no change of sign. Let's look at another example. We'll have a look at f of x is equal to x to the one third. So the graph of this function looks it's the inverse of the cubic function, so it should look something like this. So this is x to the one third. And let's look at the tangent lines. So here they're below, and then here they're above. So we should expect a point of inflection around x equals zero. So we'll calculate the second derivative. So the first derivative is one third x to the minus two thirds. And then we'll have the second derivative being minus two on nine x 
to the minus 2 thirds minus 3 on 3 and this is minus 2 on 9 x to the minus 5 on 3 so we can also write this as minus 2 on 9 x to the 5 thirds and notice that the if we set this equal to 0 then this equation has no solutions the second derivative is not defined uh, at x equals 0 that would be um, so you can kind of see that here so even if the second derivative equaling 0 doesn't have a solution we can still have an inflection point occurring so this criterion of the second derivative equaling 0 gives you an inflection is is just wildly false so let's just look at one more example this is a is a more straightforward example so we'll look at f of x is equal to sine x so we'll calculate the first derivative first derivative of course is is cos x and then the second derivative is uh, minus sine x now we want to look at when the second derivative changes sign let's just for simplicity restrict our attention to 0 to 2 pi and what we'll see is that sine x well minus sine x let's get a, a reasonable picture of this looks something like this so here's pi Here's 2 pi, pi and 3 pi on 2. So we want to look, so this is the graph of the second derivative. We want to look where this changes sign. So it changes sign from here to here. And so what we would have is we would have a point of inflection occurring at x equals pi. So an inflection point. occurs when x equals pi. Okay, so to just sum up, the condition for an inflection point is not that the second derivative equals zero, it's that the second derivative changes sign about that point. So we looked at the example of x to the four, which has the second derivative equaling zero, but doesn't change sign, so there's no inflection point. We have this example of x to the one-third where an inflection point occurs the uh, second derivative does change sign but we can't solve the equation uh, the second derivative equaling zero there's no solution to that and then in this final example we just look at a more straightforward case where it may work that the second derivative equals zero but we confirm that uh, with the graph to ensure that the second derivative is changing sign. Okay, so if you like that video, please uh, hit the like button and consider subscribing if you want to see more of this content. There will be notes relating to the second derivative and inflection points in the description box down below. And that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video.